Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to No DQ video here on NoDQ.com as well as the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Aaron Rift No DQ. I would like to thank everyone that has purchased a NoDQ.com t-shirt at ProWrestlingTees.com. You could still take advantage of the Black Friday sale. Head over to ProWrestlingTees.com, search No DQ, or check out the link in the description box. You can get 20% off your entire order using the code Black Friday. And there are 15 NoDQ.com t-shirt designs to choose from. Now with that being said, let's get down to your questions. First one today comes from Kevin Randall. First Miz loses to Baron Corbin, then Roman Reigns. Why are they dogging the Miz? He's one of the best things about Raw. Shouldn't a newbie get the belt slash rub off of him? Please answer in video which is the hashtag to use, by the way, to submit your questions. Regarding The Miz, so that's the big debate. We saw The Miz lose the IC title to Roman Reigns on Raw. The Miz is going off to film the latest installment of the Marine franchise. Can you believe that? Can you believe the Marine is actually a movie franchise? How have so many Marine films been made? Do people actually watch these movies? That's my question, but anyways, The Miz putting over Roman Reigns, I get it. WWE is trying to build up Reigns. He's now a Grand Slam champion, so that is something to add to Reigns' legacy. Now, the big debate is, should The Miz have put over somebody else? I could make an argument for Samoa Joe or Finn Balor or one of these other guys beating The Miz. I could make that argument, but I get it. I understand why WWE had Roman Reigns win the IC title to add to Reigns' legacy. And also, this opens up the door for all three SHIELD members to be champions if Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins regain the tag team titles. So I understand it. Yes, you could have done something else. You could have had Samoa Joe beat The Miz, or you could have had Finn Balor do it, or any number of guys but I understand Reigns getting it. And I got this question here from James. Roman Reigns did nothing with the US title even though he was on his own. Now he's with the Shield, do you see the same happening with the IC title or do you see him defending it in pay-per-view main events? It's possible, you have to keep in mind that Brock Lesnar is a part-timer and he's the Universal Champion. So it's nice to have a title be defended in main events. It makes sense when you look at it from that perspective. With Brock Lesnar not around all the time, Roman Reigns could defend the IC title in the main event at WWE live shows and on television, and that elevates the title. So theoretically, this should help elevate the IC title. Even though The Miz did do a great job as IC champion, with Roman Reigns being champion on paper, this should make the title. The man makes the title. Before it used to be the title makes the man, but now the man makes the title. Roman Reigns on paper should make the title more important. The question is, will WWE follow through with it? Will Reigns actually defend the title at live events and on pay-per-views? Or will he lose it back right away? Will he lose it back to The Miz? Or will there be a triple threat where Roman Reigns drops the title without having to take the fall? Um, there's so many different possibilities, and I've, I've seen a lot of different fan theories about it, different ways that this could potentially go. So we'll have to wait and see, but if WWE played their cards right, this should help. This should make the IC title more of a credible championship and give some prestige to that title again. And I got this one here from Calvin. Happy birthday, Aaron. Now that Roman Reigns is the IC champion, is there any chance there will be another Shield triple threat match at WrestleMania instead of the Roman Reigns-Lesnar match? I doubt it. I mean, quite frankly, I don't think that's going to happen. And the fact that New Day talked about how the Shield's going to break up again and they're going to stick together, I think there's a better chance, I think I mentioned this in a recent video, that the New Day will break up and have a triple threat match. I think that's more of a possibility. I like the idea, though, of a Shield triple threat at WrestleMania. Yes, we did see a Shield triple threat match already. It happened, but we haven't seen it at WrestleMania. I would love that. 
I would much rather see Roman Reigns versus the Shield members, Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins, in a triple threat for the IC title. I'd much rather see that than Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar. I've made this clear. As a fan, personally, I would rather see the Shield triple threat at WrestleMania than Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar. But I don't think it's going to happen. If I had to call it and make a prediction, I would say that it's not going to happen. This one comes from Steve. Hey Aaron, any chance of Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar being like Hulk Hogan versus the Ultimate Warrior at WrestleMania 6, IC Champion versus Universal Champion, winner take all? I do like this idea, even though I'm not a fan of Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar again, I do like the concept of winner take all, champion versus champion with both titles on the line. I do think that's a cool idea and a way to elevate the title. I did talk about this briefly with David Payne and Virtue on this week's edition of The Pop. Make sure you check that out, by the way, if you have not seen it yet. We had some very good discussion about some of the current WWE topics. I think it's a great idea. If WWE is hell-bent on doing Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar, then yeah, make it title for title. WWE Champion, Universal Champion, I should say, versus the IC Champion, winner take all. Maybe do the same thing at WrestleMania 6, where the winner forfeits the IC title and the IC title is crowned in a tournament. Maybe you could bring back King of the Ring or do something like that and have the winner become IC Champion. There's a lot of different things you could do. Um, I like the idea, and I think it's better than whatever else would happen with the IC title, because if Roman drops it to somebody, I could see the IC title perhaps not even being on the WrestleMania card knowing WWE history. And at best, it might be in the opening match or some throwaway four-person match, something like that. So yeah, I think the IC title would definitely be in a high-profile position um, if Roman Reigns stayed champion through WrestleMania. No doubt the IC title would have more prestige, and I'm all for that. So I would definitely be a fan of that, even if I'm not necessarily a fan of Reigns versus Lesnar per se. Got this one here from Colin Andrew. Huge fan of the show. Thank you for that. Could you see The Shield versus Miz and The Bar with the IC and tag team titles on the line? If The Shield wins, they can get the tag titles, or if Miz wins, he gets the IC title back. Again, I like the idea, and this was actually brought up back during the TLC pay-per-view build, the idea that all the titles would be on the line. Sort of like 1995 when um, Diesel and Shawn Michaels faced Owen Hart and Yokozuna, and all the titles were on the line in one match. I would love that idea to do that again at some point. I would definitely be a fan of that if WWE decided to do that match, and I would definitely do it maybe for the first Raw of the year. How about this for an idea? Maybe for Raw 25, have that big match main event Raw right before the Royal Rumble with all the titles on the line. I think that that would be a great main event for Raw 25, so I'm all for it, 100%. I think it's a great idea. This one comes from Cruz. Do you think Vince McMahon heard some cheers and that's why he imme immediately gave Roman Reigns the IC title? No, I don't think that that was the case at all. I think whether there's cheers or boos, WWE is going to do what they're going to do with Roman Reigns. And I think the idea was Roman Reigns becomes the Grand Slam champion. It adds to his legacy and you could potentially do that match I just talked about where all three S.H.I.E.L.D. members could be champions and you build those guys up. Because at the end of the day, the goal is to make Roman Reigns as strong as possible. He's the guy, whether people like it or not, and um, that's the decision Vince made. And it doesn't matter if Roman gets cheers or not. Uh, that's the direction they are going to go in, ultimately, is with Roman Reigns coming out on top because he's the guy that the company sees as the future. He's their guy, he's their bread and butter, and that's the way it is in WWE. This one comes from Rooster. Since WWE has changed plans for the main event of Survivor Series due to negative fan reception, can you see Vince possibly changing his mind about Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania? And his username is at I Still Hate Roman. 
Hate is a strong word. Couldn't you just say you really, really don't like him or something like that? But anyways, Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar, I think WWE will do that match unless Vince decides there's a better option. And I don't know if the fans will really have that much influence. I think it will come down to Vince and his own personal opinion, his own gut feeling inside what he thinks is best for his business. Um, you know, he'll listen to the fans, but he knows there's a big group of fans that don't like Roman Reigns, yet they keep watching and they keep showing up to live events, spending money, and they, they seem to be having a good time booing him. Um, so as long as that's the case, um, Vince is only going to listen to the fans to a certain degree. I think, I think pretty much we all knew Brock Lesnar versus Jinder Mahal was not a good idea, and I think Vince realized that, that it really wasn't going to work. Imagine that pay-per-view without Brock Lesnar and AJ Styles. I mean, Lesnar and Styles really boosted that pay-per-view. And um, imagine if it was Lesnar versus Mahal. I mean, I think I don't think that pay-per-view would have gotten a B rating for me, probably a C at best. Um, it would have brought down the show a lot. And I think Vince realized that. He had that sense. Um, maybe the fans had some influence, but I think at the end of the day, Vince realized, you know what? Styles is a better choice. Let's go with that. And uh, Vince was right, and uh, he made the right decision. But I don't think Vince is going to change WrestleMania plans just because the fans are complaining. I mean, he's going to do what he's going to do. This one comes from B. Hill. Hey, Aaron, what do you think about the debuts of the NXT women on Raw and SmackDown? I thought it was a bit strange bringing up so many unproven talents while leaving some of the more experienced ladies down in NXT. Well, apparently this was Vince's decision. Vince wanted to shake things up in the women's division on both brands. As I mentioned on No DQ Live, I like it overall, but I think the one downside is that the SmackDown angle was basically a copycat. I'm not really a huge fan of doing the same thing on SmackDown, bringing in the three women faction, just like on Raw. I thought that that was a little, a little too much, and um, I would have liked if WWE had done something a little bit different. That's my one criticism of the angle. I do like the idea of new women being brought in, but ultimately with more women being brought in, some women are going to get lost in the shuffle now, and that's just the nature of the beast. Um, you do have the Royal Rumble coming up. There's a lot of speculation. It would make sense with the new women coming in and all the women involved. Um, I think there's over 20 women now on the main roster between Raw and SmackDown. And WWE could very well do a 20 women Royal Rumble match um, along with the 30 man Royal Rumble match. I could definitely see that as a possibility and it would make sense. Now would be the time. If WWE is going to do a women's Royal Rumble match, they got enough people now to do a 20 person match, a 20 women match. So uh, we'll see if it happens or not. I mean, now would be the time. They got the women there and uh, we'll see if they do it or not. This one comes from Haley Shaw. Hey Aaron, please answer in video. Is there a possibility that the two women's factions that debuted on Raw and SmackDown are connected? Do you think Paige is the mastermind behind both groups and all female NXT faction covering both brands would be awesome in my opinion? You know what? I actually love that idea and that would that would explain the whole thing. You know, I, I feel like it doesn't really make a lot of sense the same week there's another faction that just happens to debut on SmackDown. Um, the same the same week as Raw. Um, like I said, I think that it, it just really doesn't make a whole lot of sense and it's too much of a copycat storyline unless they just happen to be connected, in which case I think it would be a great idea if Paige had this, this super faction that was trying to take over both shows. Um, I like it. I, I think it's something different. We really haven't seen something like that. You know, kind of like an NWO type group that is trying to take over both Raw and SmackDown, and Paige could say that she doesn't represent either Raw or SmackDown, and her group doesn't represent either brand. I think it would be really cool to do like a female version of the NWO. You know, there's been the MMA horsewomen and the WWE horsewomen, horsewomen but what about an NWO female group that just tries to take over the entire WWE on both brands? I think it's a cool concept. I like it a lot. Um, which means it's unlikely WWE will do it, quite frankly. 
Got this one here from Nick, Ultra Shadow 97, and he's got Shadow the Hedgehog as his profile picture. Why would WWE bring up Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville to the main roster early? They should have stayed in NXT longer. Well, from what I understand, WWE did not want Mandy Rose to be in the NXT brand. They just didn't want her having, having that perception um, that she's an NXT star. I think WWE wanted to bring her in in a different way than the typical NXT person comes in, they're a rookie, and then they come up to the main roster. I think WWE had a different vision for her. And she's been doing the training. She's been doing um, the preparations for the main roster. She just hasn't been featured on NXT. And I think, uh, you know, from what I've heard, she's definitely shown some potential and she's got a great look. And I think WWE is, is confident that she can be a big star in the company. Um, Sonya Deville, I'm not really sure. I'm, I don't know a lot about her. Um, the big question is why did WWE call up these women and not some of the other women like Nikki Cross? and some of the other NXT women that have been there for a while. Um, I really don't have a good answer for that. I mean, time will tell. I don't know what WWE's plan is with these women. Um, are they going to be pushed strongly, or are they going to be like the Miz Taraj? Are these women going to be basically lackeys? I mean, that that's the big question. Will Mandy Rose just be like Bo Dallas? I mean, it's hard to say right now. We'll have to see how it plays out. Uh, but I'm sure WWE has a good reason why these women were called up and not the other ones. But yeah, it's a big, it's a big question. Why did WWE do this? Um, I really don't have a good answer for you, unfortunately. This one comes from Gareth Smith. Why is WWE doing a pay-per-view called Clash of the Champions, or excuse me, Clash of Champions, and Survivor Series was literally champion versus champion. It's stupid. All right, well, this is my theory. This is just a theory. I don't know the reality of the situation, but my, my feeling is that WWE planned out the pay-per-views well in advance. Clash of Champions was scheduled a long time ago before WWE had this idea that Survivor Series was going to feature champion versus champion matches. I'm sure WWE knew Survivor Series was going to be Raw versus SmackDown themed, but maybe they came up with the idea of doing champion versus champion fairly recently after they already booked everything for the rest of the year including clash of the champions i said it again clash of champions in december i need to get the the out so i think that's what it was wwe just set up the pay-per-view schedule way in advance and then fairly recently decided hey let's make survivor series champion versus champion who cares about clash of champions because survivor series is one of the big pay-per-views so that's going to be the focus. I mean, let's face it, Clash of Champions is a throwaway pay-per-view. Um, I think it's a dumb name anyways. Um, I think they should just come up with something different, use a different name for the pay-per-view. Uh, maybe bring back Armageddon. I know it's not very PG, but whatever. Maybe maybe uh, come up with a new name like Holiday Havoc or something like that. Um, something like Christmas-themed, like St. Valentine's Day Massacre was in February. Um, just... Just maybe do like a holiday themed pay-per-view in December instead of doing Clash of Champions. It just, it feels weird. It just, I'm not a big fan of it. I, I don't really like the name that much. Um, and I think every pay-per-view, I don't really like the theme, you know, of every title being on the line. I think every title should be on the line at every pay-per-view. Um, I don't think there should be a pay-per-view where a title is not being defended unless you're doing a, a very special match where the champions are involved in the match, but there's not a title on the line. But most of the time, I, I think every pay-per-view should have every title on the line. So the whole concept of a pay-per-view with all the titles being on the line, eh, just not a fan of it. This one comes from Sean T. Flick. Should Ronda Rousey make her debut at Raw 25? Again, I like the idea, you know, I think WWE should stack up Raw 25 as much as possible, and that would be a great time to set up a big angle for WrestleMania, to really get the ball rolling for WrestleMania, because my guess is Raw 25 will have a much larger viewership than usual, so why not take advantage of that? You have a lot of people watching, shoot the angle for WrestleMania. I do think it's a great idea if Ronda Rousey is going to be debuting in time for WrestleMania, 
then yeah, I would have her there at Raw 25 and plant the seeds for whatever big match he's going to do at WrestleMania. Definitely a fan of that. I think WWE should do it. This one comes from Colin Andrew. Love the show. With the report of Big Cass not coming back after until after WrestleMania 34, what do you see for him when he returns? It's hard to say right now because I'm not sure what the landscape of WWE will be right after WrestleMania 34. I mean, I think for him and his own happiness, I would put him on the same brand as Carmella. So that means either Cass goes to SmackDown or Carmella goes to Raw. But have them on the same brand, maybe have them work together and be, um, you know, their own duo. Maybe even reunite Enzo, Cass, and Carmella and form them as a new faction. Um, you know, not a new faction, but have them be a team again. Um, have them as a three-person heel team. You know, Enzo's a heel right now. I think it makes sense. Maybe Enzo could be the manager and Big Cass could go for the main title and Carmella could go for the women's title and you have a super faction right there. Um, so that's what I would do. I would reunite the three of them together as heels and, um, you know, let them be dominant and let Enzo be the mouthpiece for Big Cass because Cass needs it. I mean, let's face it. Cass's mic work is not really up to the main event standard in WWE. And Enzo is a great promo, but WWE is never going to really push him in a high profile spot in the company. So it makes sense for them to stick together and have Enzo be the mouthpiece for Cass, just like Paul Heyman is the mouthpiece for Brock Lesnar. So I would definitely reunite the three of them if it was my call. This one comes from Bloog Flarkenberg. Can you see Sting ever making an appearance on WWE television again, not to wrestle, but cut a promo or do something? Yeah, definitely. I think we will see we will see Sting back on a WWE show at some point if the situation calls for it, if there's a good reason to bring him back. You know, he could be on Raw 25, even though he's not really a part of Raw history that much. He made a couple of appearances on Raw. Um, during 2014, 2015, but, um, you know, he wasn't a major part of WWE history, uh, but I, I could see him appearing every now and then as a legend for a special show. Maybe he could be a guest referee or be Raw GM at some point when Angle's run is done. Um, there's, there's several things you could do, several options for Sting. I, I don't think we've seen the last of him on WWE TV. I think we will see him every now and then make a surprise appearance or maybe even an advertised appearance. Um, he'll he'll be around every now and then when when there's a when there's a, a spot for him to really be able to do something meaningful. You know, you just don't want to have him appear without any kind of fanfare and not really do anything with him. You actually want to have him try to be involved in some sort of storyline and give him something interesting to do. That'll wrap it up for No DQ video. Again, thank you guys for watching and, sh and your support. I really do appreciate it. Stay tuned to NoDQ.com for the very latest regarding the upcoming Clash of Champions pay-per-view. Um, make sure you send in your nominations for the NoDQ.com year-end awards. Um, starting December 1st, you will be able to vote NoDQ.com and uh, we'll have the videos to give our predictions and that'll do it for this video. So thank you again. Stay tuned for more on the No DQ channel. Subscribe if you haven't already. YouTube.com slash Aaron Riff No DQ. And I will see you guys next time.